first and now the official BC Lions podcast is back. Matt Baker, Nick Kowalski, uh, not inside the Go Goat Sports Studios this week as uh, we're recording this virtually on the holiday Monday, but as always, thrilled to be aligned with Go Goat Sports and Sakaris and Price. <laughs> Busy Friday for those guys, uh, no doubt, with uh, the news that JT Miller is going to be a Canuck for quite a long time, but um, good on the hockey team for re-upping him, because I'm a big JT Miller fan, but I love the guys, Sakaris and Price, uh, was down at Yellow Dog Brewing on one of my off days last week, and Nick, that's a spot, uh, I know you've sampled the beer, and uh, that's on your list to get to Yellow Dog one of these times. I haven't actually been to the brewery yet, but I'm a I am a big Yellow Dog fan. It's mm-hmm. uh it's gone into my uh, my beer palette uh, since I've moved over to uh, British Columbia. So there you go. Uh, shout out uh, to those guys, uh, Sakaris and Price. Thrilled to be aligned with them as always. Now, quite a bit has happened since you and I last spoke on this podcast. Yeah. Of course, um, twenty three sixteen loss to Saskatchewan. Uh, we opted to take a bye week from it as well, but. You know, we very easily could have done an episode last week based on everything that uh, went down. Uh, of course, it was, a well, full disclosure, I was tipped off kind of early in the week that we might be doing something with, with a particular quarterback, Vernon Adams Jr. And so I think a lot of concerns in Lion Land have been alleviated. And we're going to talk to Neil McAvoy, co-general manager, more about this, but uh, kind of a buy, a buy a week bombshell making the trade for Vernon Nick, big time. Yeah, it was it was very exciting news. I, I was joking around that um, all this team was missing was a little excitement. So now we have that with Vernon Adams. But um, yeah, very very interesting move, and um, it definitely shows that uh, like the BC Lions that we're still in it to compete for a great cup this year. I mean, we're, we're eight and two, so that kind of goes without saying. But um, the way I'm looking at this is that. The, uh, especially with the bye week lining up nice with this, is that uh, chapter one of the season is over, or the first half, if you want to say, is complete, mm-hmm. and that's that was Nathan's time, and now with the second chapter and is on, and it's it's whoever's going to step up to the t- uh, the plate at, at quarterback here and um, lead this team and ultimately to a playoff spot, and hopefully more. And then for those uh, tuning in who may not have picked up the practice news on on Monday, well, really we've had as of this recording, we've had three days of prep, but a lot will. Tuesday, Wednesday will tell a real story, but um, early indications are it appears as though Antonio Pipkin has gotten slightly more work with the ones. So I I think it's clear you're going to have an American starter, uh, whether it's Pipkin or Vernon Adams Jr. We know VA is going to dress and play. We just don't know how much and who starts again. Uh, Michael O'Connor uh, still healing, still getting better from that groin injury he suffered against the Riders. Uh, officially on the Monday injury report, he was a limited participant. So um, you do the math and you have an American starting again, whether it's VA or Mr. Pipkin, we shall see. Definitely some interesting and intriguing ratio possibilities coming in. I know we talked a little bit about Andrew Pearson, looked to be getting some first team work at left guard. Uh, do you maybe do something on the defensive line? Uh, who knows? But um, it's going to be an intriguing depth chart that gets released on Thursday morning, whatever that may look like, Nick. 100%. And I think it's uh, the decisions the coaching staff uh, have ahead of them are really is why um, why they make the big bucks and why they're in charge of these decisions because um, it, it's a big one coming up, especially, yeah, you have to not only be a football coach and do all the game planning and scheming and coaching in general with players but you also in this league at least you have to make sure that the ratio is intact and um obviously with a different um a possibly a, an american quarterback being under center this week it is gonna uh require to um make a ratio change and we saw that last friday too with with james butler having to go out um and david Mackey having to come in as a canadian uh, at the running back position last uh our last game that we played so i mean uh, it's something I love about the Canadian Football League, actually, is that it really fo- forces the, the 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 coaches here to have another element to think of. And I mean, we can talk yeah. about this later, but even even the game yesterday that we watched, like there was a a very unique Canadian situation intact where um, there was a one point lead, and both coaches are having to figure out what to do with that 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 rouge factor coming into play. So um, that, along with the ratio here, is it really um, this, this whole Labor Day weekend. Just, it feels very very Canadian, very Canadian Football League ish. 
And you know, Neil McAvoy is going to be jacked to talk about uh, Labor Day. And yes, of course, those Blue Bombers, they just found a way yet again, uh, shut her down in the second half. But we shall see. Uh, keep winning games on our part and keep pace and uh, make those two games with the Bombers mean something toward the end of the season. Now, laundry list of injuries that came out of the Saskatchewan loss. I know a lot of fans were concerned asking me, DMing me throughout the break. The Lucky Whitehead, is it serious? TJ Lee, is it serious? Lucky was a limited participant. Uh, I would assume he's good to go. Uh, maybe pulling him out in the second half with that hamstring injury was more precautionary than anything. Uh, TJ Lee, uh, likely not going to go this week. I uh, was a non-participant. And, and again, more intrigue. Uh, the, these chess pieces in the secondary now. Uh, do you activate a Jalen Edwards Cooper? Uh, do you go back to a Quincy Moje maybe at halfback? Again, good problems to have. You have guys at that position that can play multiple spots. Uh, Going to have to bring in someone who didn't play last game. 100%. And I th- when I think of the whole secondary juggling that's been going on uh, this past uh, these past couple of days at practice, and even the past couple of months or so, really when, when Quincy Moje had departed the lineup with an injury, is that Luches Purifoy has come as advertised, uh, started mm-hmm. the league, or started the season at Sam Linebacker, um, was making plays there, then got – uh, put back at safety and he's still making interceptions still um had a lot of tackles in that in that game against Saskatchewan stepping up uh run fitting and all of that but um there like you said there are guys that have been on the practice roster or the one game injury list for weeks now that are hungry and Jalen Edwards Cooper is someone that comes to mind um kind of busted onto the scene last year and um made a name for himself and um with the free agent additions that have been made this season, he was out of a starting roster spot. So he's been hungry to get back into the lineup or even there's, there's Quincy Moje who's now um, participating in practice again too. So Ryan Phillips, yeah, he, he has options, even though TJ uh, may not be, may not be suiting up uh, this weekend and, and, and beyond. Yeah. And pretty good test. Trevor Harris, Gino Lewis. Uh, that's an offense that, uh, that can make you pay if, if you're not on on your assignment. So Lions Alouettes 430, uh, love going into Montreal. I know you've not experienced it yet, uh, at least from a CFL perspective, but uh, Molson Stadium, uh, the backdrop there at McGill, this time of year, usually gorgeous weather, should be nice and hot and humid. So uh, look for this offense, uh, really, uh, whether, again, whether it's Pipkin or VA, however that shakes down, um, there's uh, an opportunity here uh, to go on a fast track and, and put up some more points and yards. Lions, by the way, five wins in their last six trips to Montreal. So lots always made about the long flight and losing three hours and body clocks maybe not adjusting that quickly. Hasn't been an issue. So a chance to get back uh, on a winning record, on a winning note, I should say, and get to 9-2. and two. After that, a big home-and-home home series with Calgary. So a very interesting three weeks as the Lions uh, very much remain in the driver's seat to not only perhaps clinch a playoff spot here in the next couple of weeks, but uh, stay in control of their own destiny as far as a top-two position and a home game at BC Place in November. Uh, Neil McAvoy uh, was a busy bye week for him. Uh, the trade for Vernon Adams Address the special teams, the return game in a big way. CFL kickoff return yards leader Terry Williams, also uh, now a member of the squad. The Lions shipping a third-round pick to the Red Blacks for him on Sunday. He's going to play. He's expected to contribute here right away. So uh, we'll talk with Neil McAvoy coming up in a matter of moments on First and Now. And here he is in fine form, sporting his turf tradition hat. Good chance for us to promote that new line, which I think we're debuting one of these road games coming up. I ordered the vintage logo hat myself, but it is co-GM, director of football operations, um, team security man, titles unnamed, Neil McAvoy joining us here. Neil, good to see Mm -hmm. you. The more you can do, the more they keep you around. I've uh, done everything, and I'm going to continue to do everything just so, uh, you know, the more you can do. That's a shout-out to all you young guys out there. (laughs) Yes, Uh, of which I'm not one anymore, but um, I still feel young, and we'll put that to the test in Montreal here in in a few nights' time. But, um, Neil, it's good of you to join us. Uh, Welcome back to the podcast. You are a a friend of the program. Our first chance of speaking with you in this format, uh, I think it was right before training camp, but 
a bye week that was an active bye week. Uh, started with a trade for Mr. Vernon Adams Jr. He's getting up to speed at practice. Uh, addressed the return game uh, the other day as well. Just how productive uh, and satisfying was this for you to address a couple of important needs? Yeah, you know what? Uh, we always go into each week, uh, regardless of a bye week or whatever, to uh, see what we need to do to make the football team better. And we just felt that um, with the addition of Vernon and, uh, you know, when we were able to get a guy like Terry Williams to uh, help our return uh, special teams, we, we just felt those would be good additions to our football team. And some people may say we gave up a little too much, but at the end of the day, uh, we got uh, Daniel Joseph hopefully coming back. He just got cut from the Buffalo Bills. Um, we got um, Ryder Varga, who's playing U Sport. So we have, you know, and even um, the young man we drafted out of Ottawa last year, we have guys that are going to be coming back to our organization who have already been through a training camp that will uh, make us better. So we felt by uh, you know, bringing these additions on will uh, help us in 2022 and and 23 because they're you know they're under contract for next year as well. Yeah, certainly some benefits to drafting well and stockpiling some guys who aren't eligible. Yeah, Adam Wallace, said the Ottawa yeah, player you're right. thinking of, I believe, was yep. with us in camp. Yeah, forgot about. See, there's there's quite a few examples. You forget that they're they're coming through the pipeline, but. Vernon specifically, uh, give us and our fans really a, a little more insight. When does that process start? You know, were, were the wheels in motion even before uh, we played Saskatchewan there the second time? Or how, how did that process begin? Yeah, to be quite honest, being a West Coast guy, um, I've always been a fan of Vernon Adams. He's uh, he's from California, grew up in you know the Seattle area, lives in the Seattle area now. So, of course, being a West Coast team, um, I, I always like local guys and I consider him local. So... We've always been on talking basis. And then when um, we heard some rumblings, you may, might not be as happy in, in, in Montreal. And, and we, we were able to, uh, you know, start the process of talking to Montreal, um, you know, uh, you know, to get him under contract as a BC line and, of course, give up some compensation for it. But at the end of the day, adding good assets to your football team is what you want to do. Um, you want to be able to have options at the end of the year and at, throughout the year and um, unfortunately, with Nathan being hurt, um, this just gives us a, a you know a good addition at the quarterback position, a coveted position that uh, all teams like to have. And we feel now we have two, three, four guys at that position, maybe five that uh, you know are are top notch. And so uh, we're just excited about having all the guys we have, and you know uh, bringing Vernon on took some time, but at the end of the day, it worked out, and uh, you know we're we're excited to have him with us now. And with Vernon now here um, as an American quarterback, how important is it to have all the additions that have been made in terms of the Canadians who can um, obviously fill in now? And one of them is going to be have to uh, be required to start now in, in the case that Vernon or even Antonio Pipkin is under center and is an American quarterback, whereas Nathan is a, was a Canadian. So the ratio needs to be yep. adjusted, correct? Yeah, we're going to have to make a ratio, a roster move. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be an offensive line or a running back or a receiver, or you can even you know, um, you do something on the defense. But, uh, yeah, that's the unfortunate part. When you play with a Canadian quarterback, you're able to start 17 Americans. Most teams play with um, 16 Americans, seven Canadians, and one quarterback. Uh, because our quarterback is Canadian, he's part of that seven ratio. So we are able to start 17 Americans. And uh, with the addition of playing an American quarterback now, we're going to have to uh, juggle some guys around, which – we're excited about the, uh, you know, it gives guys other opportunities to play. And, uh, you know, um, we're excited about uh, giving them the opportunities. We feel that our Canadian talent is good. And now we're just going to be on par with everyone else starting those, uh, you know, 16 Americans and seven Canadians and one quarterback. So it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then dating back to when we uh, last talked to you before training camp, uh, we brought up um, some of the free agent additions you and you and Coach Rick made. But Matthew Betts was one that um, I, I was pretty interested to have him. He was a high pedigree player at Laval, and I'm sure you, you're pretty satisfied with uh, the production he's produced at uh, defensive end this year so far. Yeah, satisfied, and you know what? What a great guy too. I don't, you know, I know you guys have talked to him one on one. He's he's um, always smiling on the field and off the field. And you know what? At the end of the day, we felt that we need to bring good people onto this organization. Obviously playing good football is number one, but um, with that, let's, let's bring some good guys in and um, speaking with Matthew Betts and, and David Menard, those are two just first class individual people 
um, on and off the field that uh, certainly can play good football and have really helped us on the defensive line. And so I, I think we picked up on on what you were saying there, but just expand on that, Neil. I mean, this team as a whole seems a lot more tight than it was a season ago. How much would you agree with that? Oh, totally. And, you know, that's something that we worked on throughout the offseason to bring in guys that were going to fit the mold of what we want, which is good football players on and off the field. And like I said before, guys like Lucky, guys like, you know, Matthew Betts, guys like David Menard. And, you know, we already had a great culture here, and now it was it was complementing that culture and bringing in top-notch free agents that will help us put, us put us over the edge. And, like, start of the season, 8-1 and one at the halfway mark, 8-2, uh, 10 games in. You know what? Uh, we'll take it, and we're just going to keep on fighting and building and uh, getting better as the weeks go on. Yeah, expanding on that, uh, big stretch here uh, before the playoffs, eight games and eight weeks. Uh, maybe that third bye week came at a right time, allowing a couple of guys uh, to heal up, and, and we'll see what the final roster is this week. But I'm really going to see what this group is made out of now. I mean, the weather's going to get colder. We're going to have to go into Edmonton, Calgary. Uh, Winnipeg should be nice and uh, frigid at the end of October. Uh, this is what the CFL is all about, right? Uh, you must be jacked uh, to find out what this group is going to have in store. Yeah, do you know what? Bye weeks, you know what? That, that's a new phenomenon because I remember in the old days, there was no bye week. You played 18 right. weeks, you just played. You went, okay? And so uh, giving guys time off, and I agree, gave us time off. So eight weeks should be nothing. The uh, you know Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I think, started 10 weeks in a row. So eight weeks for us plus playoffs. We're going to be gliding into the playoffs on a high glide and with our – you know, our, our afterburners going. So I'm excited the fact that our buys are over with and we can just focus on football now and focus on getting into the playoffs and then making, uh, you know, a run at the Great Cup because that's what it's all about, getting into the single elimination tournament and then, uh, you know, winning winning the Great Cup championship, which this team has a chance to do it. I've been around Great Cup teams before and the, this group of guys has a chance to put us over the top. And at the end of the day, it is all about them. We can say what we want. We can do what we want. We can have the depth chart as accurate as possible. We can cross all the you know T's and dot the lowercase J's. But at the end of the day, the players have to play the game. And at the end of the day, you're right, Canadian football is played outdoors in cold. And you know what? Winnipeg's going to be cold too. Calgary's going to be cold too. So those fields, it's not just us that go onto the field and it's cold. It's both teams. And that's what this league's all about is, uh, you know, the elements, the hot, the heat in the summer, the cold in the winter. And uh, you know what? We can't. That, that's what this, that's why this league is so great and we're gonna you know we're just gonna run with it and, and win as many games as we can and obviously Labor Day weekend here uh we're, we're not in action but um how exciting is it to watch the the other uh, the provincial rivalries going on this weekend you know what as a uh, Canadian and a fan of Canadian football Labor Day weekend to me is just so special and so great I love having the Friday night Ottawa Montreal game I love the Sunday game with no NFL and I love the Monday game everyone or games, uh, even I remember waking up when I was a kid, seeing Toronto play um, in Hamilton and, and fights and everything else. It's it's awesome. Uh, uh, you know, I can't I can't imagine someone saying, "Oh, they don't like it." How can you not? It's just exciting. It's fun. It's Canadian. I mean, that's what we're all about. Playing on Monday with no other thing going on. The Labor Day Classic, Edmonton Calgary. We uh, none of us has ever worked for those teams, but from afar, it's just so fun and so great and exciting to watch and i'm as a fan of canadian football and a fan of football i'm excited for this weekend and uh, you know i love I, we always have people over i did when i was a kid my parents had people over for labor day it's the last monday before school so you get to you know blow off some steam watch some football and then get back to reality tomorrow and that's that's usually what football is in the canadian football league labor day is the halfway point and then you know what after labor day you got to start to digging and clawing, and that's why it's good to have these eight weeks because we're going to dig and claw ourselves into the playoffs and then make a run at uh, winning this whole thing. Yeah, it was great to see. You mentioned that uh, we're recording this as Calgary and Edmonton are, are playing, but uh, Hamilton was wet, looked windy. It's always windy at Tim Hortons Field. The place was packed. I mean, how cool was that, right? <laughs> I've been to a Labor Day Classic in Hamilton one year. We actually spent a week in Hamilton practicing. I forget the year, 2000, 2001, 2002. And uh, I went by myself to Labor Day Classic thinking 
that now oh, this is just going to be a regular game. No one cares about football in Southern Ontario anyways. Well, guess what? They do. You go to a Labor Day yeah. game in, in Hamilton, Ontario, it is big time. People hate each other. People love each other. It's football. It's awesome. So that was one of that was a really cool experience going into the old Iverwind Stadium, sitting in the old stands and watching. Uh, and though you know, remember that stadium? You were so close to the to the players and the fans. It was really a really cool experience, and I was you know happy and excited to do that. Hey, speaking of cool experiences, uh, I mean, some people knock Molson Stadium in Montreal for maybe the lack of amenities, and for us from a media perspective, it's not the easiest place to work, but we make do. That whole backdrop at McGill, that's one of the prettiest environments, I'll say, in pro football, not just up here. I mean, how much do you like going into Montreal, which we're going to do this week? Yeah, you know, what an exciting experience. And you know, the fans are on top of you. The fans are passionate. You know, it looks like Hogwarts from um, whatever that movie is that my kids watch. Harry Potter. Yeah. Harry, there you go. That's the Harry Potter Harry Stadium, they say. Um, I love it. You know what? The, I, I love all the stadiums in this league. This league is just so great and and. Going into Montreal and, and just the backdrop of the city and, and built within the old confines of McGill. I'm reading the Sir John A. Macdonald book right now. They're talking about McGill in 1850 and building that stadium. So, I mean, that that's there's so much history there. And I just love the fact that uh, we're able to play in a place like Montreal and a team like the Alouettes where they have so much history. And uh, unfortunately for them, the BC Lions usually go in there and win. So we're going to continue that trend as well, unfortunately for them. But, hey, that's what it is. Yep. And then speaking about cool experiences, um, you and I, we, uh, we had the pleasure of going out on a, on quite a, quite an unbelievable tour in, in my words. Um, we went out to uh, Comox military base to um, have a, a day with their search and rescue team and talk about leadership, both in sport and military. But um, just, I guess for those who are unaware of that whole day and that trip we went on, just um, can you explain um how that, how that was for you and uh, maybe something that you learned from going out to uh, Comox in the base. You know what? Uh, really special. I've had a, I've had an exciting week um, starting with Thursday. Uh, we had going up to Comox and then I went to the Motley Crue Def Leppard concert Friday, but Thursday was an, a special, special day. You know what? I wasn't really sure what to expect. And um, a lot of great people that work in the military and they, they do, they, they, just a, you know, salt to the earth type of people that, you know, it was exciting going on that helicopters, things you don't get to do every day. These are, these are, these are things as Canadians that we take for granted that those people are there protecting us and they're ready to put their lives on the line to uh, help us, you know, continue on with the livelihood that we have. And um, I was really excited and, and um, it was a special day for me just to talk to those guys and then try to help them out too. I mean, they're, you know what, uh, if you, if you look back, we are, our organizations have a lot in common, you know, we have such a rich history and uh, we're just trying to keep on fighting for, you know, Canadiana and history and the Canadian military is no different. What a great organization, the air force that uh, we have are just a bunch of special people. And that was a really special day talking with them and, and uh, you know, just, just, being able to spend the day with them because you know what a lot of people don't know they don't when you th- when you think military unfortunately you probably don't think Canadian military you think American or something else but um, the Canadian military is top notch and first class and it was really special to be with those guys for the day. Well, even I think I, I liked what David Mackey said when we were um, when we were going on our trip on the way back and he just t- pretty much said these guys are real life superheroes or the, the search and rescue guys who actually go out in the field and yeah. they're, they're trained paramedics. They have, they have years of military experience on, on top of that. And they go out and they can, they, they have chainsaws to cut down trees if they need to stay in the forest for days. It was, it was just really eye opening to see. Yeah, guys. It, yeah. It was, it was really eye opening. It was cool to, you know, um, just realize the level. Like we, we take our job seriously and we, don't like losing we always like winning of course but we do lose sometimes and so you have to deal with the the losses well when they lose it's 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 a lot different than us us losing when they lose someone unfortunately probably lost their life and so they deal in high intensity high pressure environment which we try to think that we are but at the end of the day when you're talking military that that's the ultimate pressure ultimate you know, um, high intensity level job. And those guys do such a great job with it that, uh, you know, it's, it's, like I say, it's special. And it was, it was special to be with them for the day for sure. Mm-hmm. 
And I know um, you mentioned this earlier about getting for the, in the football aspect in the offseason, getting the, the right guys there for the culture. And I know from being there firsthand on last Thursday, um, you, you brought up the question of how does the recruiting process work and or how do you mold the culture of the military? So um, was there anything you learned from uh, the discussions with the different commanders um, and other search and rescue members? Uh, yeah, I, you know, at the end of the day, we're all, I mean, this is all businesses. You know, you can, you can, you know, forget about military, forget about football. At the end of the day, you're only as good as your person. I mean, so you can you can say that no, we're just going to grab anyone off the street and mold him into being the person you want him to be. You have to have the passion with your job. You have to have the passion of the sport or in the military case, the passion to be there. You know, it's not a, you know, like us, we're not a, you know, a, a Wall Street job. We, we need put people that put passion into it to make us better than what we are. And we've done that on and off the field with you guys. Look at this. Look what we're doing today. 10 years ago, we didn't have the forum like this where we're talking. We didn't have the type of, uh, you know, on-field personnel as we have. We didn't have the videos that we're producing. That's all a testament to the the personnel and the people that we brought on to make us the organization that we are. They are in the same boat as us. They need to bring in top-notch personnel to remain relevant and to keep us safe. You know, you don't want to have... You know, the old the old saying, hey, drop out, go to the army. Well, that, that, that doesn't cut it anymore in this world. I mean, you, the, you have to be at the head of your class to be in that organization because they demand the best and want the best, which is, you know, interesting aspect of it that you think, you know, it's just the army. Well, guess what? The, the, the Air Force is the top notch group of people that, you know, they, they need, you know, they need the real people. They can't have guys that are faking it because, like I said, at the end of the day, it's life or death for them. And we're, you know, we're trying to mold ourselves like that too. We're obviously not life and death, but we need to get top-notch people within our organization. I think we've done a good job of doing that and, and making us more relevant than what we were yesterday. And I think, you know, continuing to do things like we're doing now, showing the videos that we have, continuing to win on the field, continuing to win off the field, will, will just make it all easier for all of us at the end of the day. Hey, very well said, Neil. Uh, good on you. Uh, good on you guys. And yeah, looking forward to seeing the the content that comes out of that big day. Some of the pictures look very cool as well. So yeah, whoever's putting uh, listen, that together, get on it. Okay, stop doing the stuff like this. Get on the content yeah. so we can see us go in the uh, helicopter. Yeah, I'm you're. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nick, you're you're staying home from Montreal this week. You got to edit that yeah. pronto, right? Yeah. So. Oh, I've been, I've been looking at the footage so far, and it, yeah, it's it's mind blowing in my opinion. Even being there, just there was yeah. f- just for a little tease. There was we were out up probably the hundreds of feet in the air, and um, one of the military members in the actual helicopter just opens up the side door, and we're casually in the mountains with literally five feet in front of you, open door. Yeah, do you know what? I, I was actually surprised at that, and like you know, I know those guys are professionals, but hey, we're you know, flying at whatever the speed we're flying at. And all of a sudden the doors are open up and ah, take your seatbelt up, walk around like you're on a plane. I mean, it's uh, hey, it's high intensity. Like I said, those guys are, they know what they're doing. I never felt we weren't safe. So, you know, it was like I say, a special day and I'm glad, you know, we were able to uh, do it and I'm glad you're able to, uh, I'm sure get a lot of good video that we're able to watch and, uh, you know, remember those uh, memories and cherish everything we did that day. For sure. Yeah. Well said. Uh, Neil, uh, we'll let you get back to work. Uh, who knows if there's any more transactions coming down the pipe. Nope. We won't want Today's to uh, Western or, uh, the Labor Day Classic, Edmonton, Calgary. I'm going to watch, rewatch the first half. Don't tell me the score. I'm sure it's high score, 37-37 or something like that going into halftime. But I'm going to watch the first half now and then enjoy the rest of my day. So thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely. No spoilers on this podcast. So there you go. Perfect. Thanks, Neil. Always great stuff with co-GM Neil McAvoy, uh, a true patriot when it comes to Canadian football. And I love listening to him get excited. And yeah, sounds like a pretty cool excursion you guys had in the helicopter. My invitation, of course, must have uh, been misplaced. But uh, joking aside, uh, good on you, Nick. And we look forward to seeing some content there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was a fantastic day. Like I'm not even kidding. It's not hyperbole when I say it was maybe one of the coolest days of my entire life. So awesome. Um, I my job was just to kind of capture the day uh, through my through my camera. But also within that day, as we mentioned with Neil, is there were multiple hour long uh, roundtable or presentation sessions where the Canadian military and the commanders that they had there they wanted to pick. 
uh, the brass of our organization, whether it was Dwayne Vanoa acting or acting president or um, Neil McAvoy, a co-general manager, or uh, George Chaika, our vice president of business, uh, they wanted to pick their brains on um, the leadership and, inter- and, and internally and externally of, of pro football organizations and, and vice versa. So we had some very strong conversations that uh, I sat on in and got to experience and just some very eye-opening stuff with, as David Mackey said, the, the, sup- the real-life superheroes that uh, are on display in the Canadian military. You can, yeah, you get to scratch off helicopter with George Chaika off your bucket list. How cool is that? Love that. Very cool. Very good to hear. Um, yes, it's crunch time. Eight games in eight weeks begins in Montreal. You can listen with Moj and Julio on AM 730, Lions Audio Network, pregame 330 Thursday, or Friday, I should say. Leave for Montreal Thursday morning, and then uh, should be a... A nice five and a half hour overnight flight home. So let's get a win and make that long flight home more enjoyable. A first game of the week. Uh, Toronto is in Ottawa Saturday. Uh, you have the Calgary Edmonton rematch, the Labor Day rematch, always good. The Banjo Bowl Sunday uh, at IG Field. And that was just a heavyweight tilt Sunday at Mosaic. And uh, we were talking about this before we started recording. Um, these top tier teams in the league have good coaching in common, Nick. For sure, and it was on display yesterday in my mind with Winnipeg, at least with with Michael Shea. Um, I mean, he, two weeks ago, Mark Leggio attempts a thirty two yarder to win the game. All he has to it was it was a tie yeah. game, so all he has to do was put it in the end zone, right? And he didn't even do that. And a lot of a lot of the Winnipeg fans were calling for his job. Well, Leggio, we're talking about, and. Two weeks later, 55-yarder at Regina, one of the most hostile environments, maybe the biggest game of the season. What does O'Shea do? He puts the trust in his kicker to hit a 55-yarder, and he does just that. And all the clock management that went into that game, too, is very – and I, I was really enjoying watching that just with the fact that it was 18-17 um, with three minutes to go, and you had all, all of that drama to deal with. And um, it just it's what makes the Canadian game so uh, – unique it, it really um emphasizes that the good coaches have to be really smart with their clock management their game management and i think yeah when you think of when you think of winnipeg michael shea obviously does that maybe better than any, anybody but then i mean calgary and bc two teams with top records too like dave dickinson's been there for years and established a great culture and they yeah they always find ways to win football games too and then it's been on display here too with rick campbell and everything he's done to put his his trust in nathan rourke and get all get this culture built right and all of the above so i mean th- that's what sticks out to me when you when you see these these true top three teams in the cfl right now although saskatchewan they, they played a they played a hell of a game and they they put up a good punch and a good fight yeah i mean they take the ball to start they go right down the field a, a clock eating drive five six minutes bully ball as you tweeted i think right yeah, uh, with Hickson, yeah. Uh, Hickson as a as a battering ram uh, out of the backfield there. I think okay, I mean Saskatchewan means business here, coming off the win uh, here, uh, of course at the the end of last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, end of last week is ten days ago, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Um, the week before Labor Day, we we of course had Labor Day weekend off. So, uh, but again, it's funny. It was reading. Uh, Ed Tate from BlueBombers.com does a great job. Was reading his preview of the game at their website, and he was kind of reminiscing uh, on Labor Day games past between the two. Um, Nick Dembski had a big play for Saskatchewan in a in a Labor Day win over Winnipeg a, a few years back, and now of course he's on the other side. He makes a big play to sort of turn the momentum in that first half. Uh, Zach Caleros and him uh, establishing a bit of a of a good connect a connection there. So um, yeah, they just find a way to get it done. They're 11 and one. Uh, they're not necessarily dominating. It's not always pretty, but till someone Wednesday, knocks Wednesday, them off, right? till someone knocks them off their perch, uh, they're going to be viewed as the favorite here. And, and rightfully so um, they're well from top to bottom down. Kyle Walters, um, Mike O'Shea, we've talked a lot about him. So, um, going to be nice, going to be a nice little measuring stick playing those guys two out of the final three weeks, uh, October 15th here, last game of the season, end of the month, October at IG field, who knows what could be at stake in that one. Uh, that's going to be fun. 
Mm-hmm. Um, well, my MVP yesterday, I brought him up, was was Mark Leggio too, and not just for that game winning fifty five yarder, but for that. Right. It was they were down by ten, Winnipeg, and he's the, they're punting, and it looks like a, his punt's going to get blocked. There's about three riders coming right at him, and he he, he sidesteps out. Yeah, yeah, he sidesteps out of that and drills a forty nine yarder, and yeah, Saskatchewan goes two and out. Winnipeg gets the ball, and then they score again, and it's game on instead of being a blowout. So, so that was the play of the game for me, but. Um, yeah, Winnipeg, like they, they just find a way. Saskatchewan, their discipline um, issues kind of came up late, and uh, obviously the turnover late kind of caught or kind of cost them. It did cost them the game at yeah. the end there. But um, I, I think the Riders are not to be slept on either. They played they played us very not well. Not at all. Yeah. You know, Daniel August there, and um, I think when it really comes down to it uh, in October there, they're, they're, I, we talked about the three Western teams, but I also think you can loop in Saskatchewan that they they've shown that they can play with with they haven't played Calgary yet, but they've shown they can play with Winnipeg and they've definitely shown that they can play with us too. So um, when it really boils down to it, yeah, it's almost a big four in the CFL right now with Saskatchewan. And one of them, it seems like one of them is going to be in the East division playoffs, which was, which make things even more intriguing. Yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of that'll come down to, I think Saskatchewan and Calgary toward the end playing at least twice more. Is it, or is it three times? I can't, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but. Yep, this is great. We hit on it with Neil. Uh, the leaves are starting to fall. I'm leaving my place this morning quite early to come to the office. A little chilly in the mornings now, so uh, you have to layer up in the morning if you're outside, even with the sun shining the way it is. It's all a sign that these mm-hmm. games are going to get that much more important. Uh, we'll be back next week, uh, hopefully breaking down a Lions win over Montreal. It's another big one going into Calgary. Uh, perhaps we'll get to someone out of Stampeder land to tee up what is the first of a big home and home series. Saturday, September 17th at McMahon. Uh, the podcast is on Twitter at first. And now I am at Bakes Takes 84. He is at Nick underscore Kowalski. Nick with a K only. And uh, Kowalski, Correct. the regular Polish Eastern European version spelling, I believe. So yeah, Nick... We'll uh, we'll connect in Montreal. We'll have some smoked meats and we'll have some fun. I love this. Yeah, and but before we go, I want to give a, a one big plug to. Um, I'm sure everyone in BC has uh, seen what Nathan Rourke is all about and all the talent he has at quarterback and um, where he's come from. But to his little brother Curtis, he um, had a massive win on last yes. in, uh, week one of college football. Um, they beat uh, Florida Atlantic, and Curtis had Curtis put up Nathan Rourke numbers. Um, and, and that win, it was like 375 yards and passing and four touchdowns. But uh, Curtis and the Ohio Bobcats are going into Penn State on, on Saturday morning. So um, for those looking for some uh, some Rourke quarterback play, um, I think it's 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Uh, Penn State's going to be hosting Curtis in Ohio. So I would check that out if you're a football fan and looking to see some uh, some Rourke quarterback action. On TSN, yes, Saturday morning. Excellent. Well said, and uh, we'll be back next week on First and Now.